Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for February 23rd, 2020, recorded around 3.50 p.m. Eastern Time. Jumping into things today, this is the sea surface temperature anomaly map last updated as of yesterday, February 22nd. Uh, not a whole lot has changed since the last time we previously talked. And again, we've been kind of keeping on this theme of this persistent La Nina pattern out here across the Nino 3.4 region, which is roughly this area in through here. Now, closer and towards the eastern Pacific side of everything, we have seen some anomalous warming out here uh, closer towards South America and Panama. And that has been related to a decrease in the trade winds across that general vicinity. And that has allowed for some downwelling out here, which has actually um, rebounded the water temperatures to slightly above the long-term average. Uh, but by and large, we're still generally looking at this overall cooler uh, anomaly pattern out here across the equatorial Pacific. And out here across the main development region of the Atlantic Basin, we continue to watch for above normal sea surface temperature anomalies. And we have seen that kind of knock down a little bit. We're not seeing these ridiculously high numbers like we were seeing last time. However, we're definitely still getting right around, you know, maybe half a degree to in some cases a degree Celsius above the long-term average. And I think that really does play into everything when you look at it because you can definitely see these sea surface temperature anomalies through the MDR here are definitely still above average. We have a pretty persistent uh, pattern out here, which has been above average for the last several uh, months at this point, continuing all the way back into last year's hurricane season. So we're definitely still kind of seeing this pattern definitely persist across the region. And this has definitely led towards uh, some eyebrows being raised uh, for the hurricane season this year, which is now under uh, 100 days away. We are about 98 days, you know, 98 to 97 days away now from the official June 1st start of the hurricane season. So it is definitely worthwhile now paying attention to this a little bit more every single day. Uh, you know, we were kind of, you know, taking this, you know, with a grain of salt, you know, back in December and January. Well, now we're almost approaching March and the sea surface temperatures now are only going to start uh, going higher and higher, only increasing because now we're past the lowest solar radiation point of the year. And because of that, now with the sun angle getting higher, the sea surface temperatures are going to increase and we're going to continue to see an increase in these water temperatures, uh, especially areas uh, you know towards the west of the Lesser Antilles. So this area right here, which is typically when early season activity starts. So we really, you know, have to start watching towards the latter part of May and then, in, of course, into June when we actually start. But uh, we're getting towards that time, and it's definitely now something that we have to really kind of keep in mind here. And kind of on the same note, this is the CDAS methodology. It's just a different methodology, but this comes from tropicaltibbets.com. And this is basically a plot of the sea surface temperature anomalies out in the Nino 3.4 region, which again is roughly correlated to this area right in through here is the Nino 3.4. And we continue to see that we've been in a pretty persistent La Nina pattern all across from back to December of 2020, all the way now through uh, the almost the end of February and beginning into March that we will be in this very persistent La Nina threshold. Now, today's contributing factor is negative 0 0.653. Uh, so that's definitely uh, still, it's kind of right there. It's a very weak La Nina at this time. You can actually see we were below uh, 1.0 here, getting close down towards one and a half degrees below average. We have rebounded a little bit. Uh, you can kind of see a general trend that has been up over the past several uh, months here. But by and large, it's not been one of this drastic kind of swings where you kind of start to see uh, this very exponential growth that uh, skyrockets. And we've not really seen that. And that is definitely a telling sign because of the fact that the atmosphere takes a while to respond towards El Nino and La Nina conditions. 
So even if we head towards maybe let's just say an El Nino by August, that will not be enough to override a busy hurricane season, and it likely will not, and we likely won't even get there. Now, on the opposite end, this is the main development region of the Atlantic Basin. We continue to see, uh, you know, some bits of warming and cooling. We've obviously had since December a mainly uh, kind of steady phase where it kind of steadied out. We have seen a little bit of a drop, uh, but now we're kind of starting to see that rebound. So you can kind of see where, uh, you know, just taking an average of everything. We have seen a little bit of a drop, uh, but now we have started to, to really pick that back up again. So we're plus one point or plus 0 0.116 for today, which is still, again, for late February, still a decent uh, chunk above the long-term average at this point. So that's definitely something we have to keep in mind. And again, every day moving forward now, this has a more significant consequence going forward in time uh, than it, you know, had in, you know, early January and uh, December at that moment. Now, if we actually look here at the actual sea surface temperatures, these are not anomalies, but these are actual sea surface temperatures at the very top uh, tops of the water here. And uh, this is uh, coming off the NOAA, NOAA NESDA site for yesterday, February 22nd. And we noticed that we had this very big cool shot out here across Texas and Louisiana. Uh, that brought extreme cold, a crippling ice storm and snowstorm to the region. And uh, absolutely, my heart goes out to those people that were affected. A, definitely a very devastating event, the power grid, that whole situation. Uh, as a consequence of that, we have knocked those shelf waters way down uh, to almost about 50 degrees at this point in time. And because of that, again, you can see some of these sea surface temperatures here about 12 degrees Celsius or so. Uh, but if you go even further, again, we can kind of see that what we have here in the uh, central part of the Gulf Basin is a very large expansive pool of about 26 degrees Celsius water uh, that extends all the way to near Miami in that area. And because of that, again, this has implications on early season hurricane activity uh, but also for a spring severe weather season. Again, that is right on the doorstep of occurring is our spring severe weather season for the Great Plains, uh, even Florida, the southeastern United States, Dixie Alley, those areas. Because of this, this will definitely help to pump up some of that moisture. But again, the biggest limiting factor is all of this uh, cooler shelf water and now that we're going to start to see the sun angle increase again as another consequence to that, uh, we're going to start seeing uh, these water temperatures rebound. Uh, we may have a couple more cool shots. I don't think we're quite done with that yet, um, but definitely probably not something like we had previously. So we're really just going to have to watch and kind of see how that uh, turns about within the next while to see uh, exactly how everything kind of works out there, but definitely something of interest. Although, as I always like to say, the Gulf the Gulf Basin is always um, going to be warm enough to support intense hurricanes by the peak of the hurricane season. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. And going further out here, again, this is the five kilometer for the entire uh, U.S. Atlantic and part of uh, the Western Atlantic Basin as well in parts of the Eastern Pacific. Again, we can see the Eastern Pacific is warming up quite nicely. And again, uh, their hurricane season starts on May the 15th. So, you know, less, way less than 90 days away um, at, at this point. But you can definitely still see that these sea surface temperatures in through here, this 26 degree isotherm goes all the way over here and into the uh, Gulf here. So again, this area is always you know, warm enough to support hurricanes, blah, 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 blah. We know that. Uh, but it is worth kind of pointing that out right now. And then even going further up the United States East Coast, off the coast of Florida here, especially the southeast coast of Florida, uh, is definitely warm at about 80 degrees there. And then you can kind of see where the western wall of the Gulf Shore is indeed right there with 60, about 65 to 70 degree water temperatures. So, the area is starting to warm up quite nicely. We're now entering again uh, that, uh, you know, critical almost 90 days away 
And uh, in these 90 days, we're going to have a lot that's going to have to play out here. And certainly something that we're going to have to watch going forward is how these sea surface temperatures evolve. And we're going to start diving into that more with the upcoming hurricane outlook and discussions that will be coming out uh, next week and whatnot. So we're going to keep looking at this and every week by week, it's going to start getting more in depth. So make sure to tune back towards that. Now, this is something also that I wanted to point out here. What we're looking at is the dynamical models and all the statistical models for the um, Nino 3-4 sea surface temperature anomalies in degrees Celsius. So this is the anomalies. And we, you can obviously clearly see this is the observed pattern and this is the forecast pattern over here. This comes from the International Research Institute and the Climate Prediction Center. But... What we can see here is that, again, we've been in a fairly decent La Nina pattern for the last while. Uh, this is January right now, so we, we're just kind of past that. We're now entering into almost March. And again, you can kind of see where we have some diversions here. Now, one thing of, of significant note here is, again, look at all the models that by the peak of the hurricane season, which is really... August, September, October, right here. These are kind of the bigger months in the hurricane season, okay? These months are all represented by generally a cool neutral phase uh, to maybe a warm uh, kind of neutral or flat out neutral phase. So what this is telling me is the probability of having an El Nino is very, very low for the peak of the hurricane season. Now, we do have, again, the spring predictability barrier, which I've talked about multiple times, where really March and April are the deciding months. However, climate forecasting as a whole has gotten a lot better over the past, you know, decade. And we're starting to see the trend that would suggest that we're going to be entering and remaining in this cool neutral or weak La Nina uh, by the time we approach this hurricane season, this upcoming hurricane season, in less than you know, less than a hundred days from now, that's important because again, remember how many days we have. We have ninety eight days about until the start of the the hurricane season, and then of course August, September, and October are, are peak months. And there's not a lot of model members here that suggest an El Nino at all. Uh, there's really only about one, two, three, four models that predict. Uh, that we head towards a La Nina by the peak of the hurricane season. Everything else is basically uh, at the zero zero line, so kind of the you know neutral phase or slightly cool neutral. That's where most of the members are by August, September, and October. And to further kind of back that up, this is the probabilistic ENSO forecasts again coming from the same uh, institute. Um, of research there and the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, and again, you can see where January, February, and March, 100% chance we're in a La Nina. And again, you remember that, you know, even a couple of months ago, that for March, we really kind of dropped that down to maybe about a 70, I would like to say 70 or 80% chance. That is definitely why we need to kind of keep a monitor. You need to look out the door sometimes, per se, and look out the window to see what's really occurring. Because, again, that really tells the tale with everything. But these climate forecast models have gotten a lot better. And uh, we can see, really, again, that we stay in a persistent La Nina for quite some time, probably out into, uh, you know, maybe April or May. And then we start to kind of chill that down towards where we start getting the peak of the hurricane season. However, like I said, look at what's kind of occurring here and look at what we got. This is August, September, and October of this upcoming hurricane season. And look where that La Nina threshold is. Almost about a 50-50 shot of La Nina and just about a 10% chance of an El Nino. That is a very, very low number probability-wise, again, probability and statistics matter here, if any of you are good in, in math, you understand that there is a semi-low chance of having an El Nino for this upcoming hurricane season, and certainly one that is going to disrupt the hurricane season by a big margin, not really something that's likely at the moment. Now, sea surface temperature-wise for the Atlantic Basin, most models are predicting it to be warmer, 
Again, we'll just have to wait and see on, on, on how that eventually evolves. But this definitely has a revolving door of something that could spill another busy hurricane season. And in only a few short weeks uh, is when we are going to be putting together our first uh, forecast for this upcoming hurricane season. So definitely if you want to see that, stay tuned because in the next few weeks that will be dropping as well. Now, while we're on the while we're on the topic of hurricane season, this is all the names for the Atlantic Basin for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Again, this is all the names for the season. Hopefully, we don't go into the Greek alphabet again, uh, but you just never know uh, any more these days. Certainly, with <laughs> with everything. Uh, taking a real quick look at the lower 48 weather, no severe weather expected for the next eight days across the United States. And by and large, only a few winter weather problems for the north here. But other than that, not really much occurring. Some fire weather warnings uh, out there across the Great Plains of the United States there for uh, critical fire danger risk. But everywhere else, including Texas, finally, is now starting to clear out. So thank goodness for that. We, of course, will be watching for everything uh, but again, it looks to be relatively quiet for the next several weeks. Again, this is the time now to start preparing for the upcoming hurricane season and monitoring everything that occurs there. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more later.